I'm going to introduce the next speaker. I haven't heard this man speak before. He's not a public speaker. He's a writer and a journalist, and he's five years uh, investigating the matter of radiation. Uh, so please, you have to get him on the stage. John.
and all other different kinds of issues. But it's the children that are most at risk of this because the radiation from these all of this electronic gadgetry penetrates up to 75% of the way into the child's skull. For instance, uh, I was at um, a local school and with a physicist with a, an advanced uh, monitor and the, the reading was 4,500 microwatts per square meter. You don't need to know what microwatts per square meter is. Uh, inside, that's outside the school. Inside the classroom, the children were getting uh, 17,000 microwatts per square meter, and the ambient radiation outside my house was 100 microwatts per square meter, and I bought some uh, wallpaper imported from Germany, and the reading in my house was one microwatt per square meter. So those children are being irradiated on a daily basis. The, the physicist who was taking the readings welled up. So these, these children are being cooked, and they don't even know it, okay? So that's a school that has a mast facing it on the side of the pub. What we're doing now is we're, we're putting these things on the side of our homes. Um, and the industry says they're safe. They're not safe. James, can I move on to the next? And the next. Okay. So, what they're doing is they're playing with words. Big business has turned the truth <coughs> on its head. And they're, instead of proving that all of this is safe, radio, non-ionizing microwave radiation is safe, they're saying, they're making any of us who are criticizing them say, prove it's not safe. <coughs> Sorry, this has been going on for the last nearly 100 years since Nikola Tesla. Uh, I don't know if you know much about him, but he, uh, he was a genius, uh, and he, he gave us modern electricity, okay? So, uh, J.P. Morgan bought a lot of his patents. And now J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs are rolling out the Tetra signal with Motorola in Ireland. They sat on the information for 100 years until the technology existed for them to make money off it. They don't care about human health. And there's ample, if you look up J.P. Morgan and some of the things uh, that company, that man and that company has been into, you'll understand the ethos there. So they bought Tetra technology. And now we have the Tetra signal being used by the Garvey. Okay. Now just, just to give you an idea, all life, all life forms, and indeed the universe, is based on spectrum. Up here we have ionizing spectrum. That's the radiation that we're all familiar with, with the atomic bomb. This is the radiation that we know kills people. Then we get into the visible spectrum, that's the colors and everything that we can see around us. And human beings are way down here, down at the uh, extreme low end of the, uh, the spectrum. So what we're talking about is ELF, extremely low frequencies. Uh, and this is microwave technology, what they say, what uh, the Irish water would call frequencies. This <laughs> Is become, this has become militarized so that um, the U.S. government, and in particular the Navy, but the U.S. military has decided some time ago that they wanted to have what they call full spectrum dominance. They want to control everything based on physics. That's us included because we're down here at the bottom of the spectrum. They want to control all of this to make sure that there are no enemies to the system. So it's a, the full spectrum dominance, it's a concept where a uh, joint military structure achieves control over all elements of the battle space using land, air, maritime, space, and even cyber-based It includes the physical world, air, 
in the surface. So the temperature signal, for instance, travels over the surface of the ground. So we could be getting it here uh, from, from the Bagarda station in West Hammond, uh, including information space. But control implies a freedom of opposition force assets to exploit uh, the vast space, which is the world. It's wholly constrained. It's contained. It's controlled. <coughs> so they're using this principle of physics to control the world. Now, I, I have a handout. Um, it's, uh, it explains how even the um, physical environment is affected. So that when they shoot these rays through buildings, for instance, it weakens the structure at the cellular level. So mortar, bricks and mortar, even those the, the individual cells of, um, of solid matter oscillate. And over time, then it, it deteriorates to the point of failure. Uh, James, can I have the next one? So what about us at the point? Mm -hmm. So Tesla even notified President Roosevelt that he had invented a death ray. This was shortly before he died, which is the, the real, the genesis of this whole thrust of uh, microwave technology. And in the 50s, there was the emergency of radio wave sickness in Moscow and Leningrad. And, and then in the 60s, the British were experimenting with frequencies to modify our minds. Uh, what they did, there's a, a gentleman, he's a lecturer in advanced physics. He was here in Dublin in April. His name is Barry Trollett. Uh, he interviewed spies after they had been exposed to the radiation because they were, they were refining their techniques to uh, control the moods of people and, and how, they were, how they were feeling as they were going about their daily business. So this technology has been around for quite a while. They know what they're doing and it's been suppressed, basically. You know, and we think it's for our own benefit because we're being defended. You know, that we're the, we're the good guys and our government is, is protecting us. So, so, what is the result of all this? Well, we know that, uh, that microwaves affect us. There are all kinds of disorders attached to this. Sleepness is one of the first ones. Depression, headaches, hyperactivity, ADHD, for instance, uh, high blood pressure, uh, microwave syndrome, which is a combination. It, it can be both hyperactivity and then low mood swings. Chromosome damage, DNA damage. Uh, just last week, I circulated a piece uh, written by three scientists, Professor Alia Hansen from the Carolina Institute in Stockholm, mm -hmm. uh, Demetrius Panagopoulos from the University of Athens in Greece, and George Carl in Washington. And their paper says that the standards that are applied for safety are completely wrong because the human body and, and the cell in the human body is dynamic, it's constantly changing, and it's based on electromagnetism. <coughs> and when confronted with uh, electromagnetic frequencies, waves, those are constantly changing. So you have, it verges on chaos theory, and they're trying to tell us that uh, it's only harmful you feel the heat from your cell phone. So feel the, uh, what they call the thermal effect. Now, I don't have a cell phone. I was given one, and I held it to my head. And I said, that, that hurts. That's, that's warm. Well, if you recall, uh, a couple years ago, Teddy Kennedy died from a, a neuroma an acoustic neuroma, that means it's the tumor in the ear, it, it was right where his cell phone, where he held his cell phone the whole time. So just as an aside, I know I'm supposed to be talking about smart makers, but this is all interrelated. So for those of you who have a cell phone, and if you're so insistent, uh, keep it an inch away from your head, 
and don't use it any more than six minutes a day. And just as a cautionary tale, last week it was on the news where uh, a young Chinese woman was playing a game on her cell phone. I don't know if you heard heard about this. Uh, but she was laying on her stomach for four hours playing the game on her cell phone, and her breast implants exploded. So we, we take it for oh, one. <laughs> Autism is one. Now this is one, and this, this brings up uh, a major point. Uh, where else in the world do they have SNAs? I don't know what that means. Ireland is an incubation center for this kind of technology. So to assign SNAs to children who have autism is a way to quiet opposition and for people to stop asking questions. Why does my child have autism? Okay. Now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, this particular condition, but it has to be one of the most heartbreaking for any parent to deal with an autistic child and it has to be dreadful for the child who has autism because they actually know that there's something wrong and they can't deal with it. It is a tragedy and it is exploding across Ireland. Okay? Brain tumors is another one. Uh, as I said, the children, there's 75% of the way into their brains is how far these microwaves penetrate. And what's happening here is your, the, the minister, uh, Rory Quinn, Minister for Education, he's rolling out the Wi-Fi in the classroom and children are going to be sitting in front of iPads. Mm. Books don't matter anymore. Mm. It's the electronics. And he says, this is the way we do education. Well, if that's the way we do education, what about the French people who are taking stuff out of the classroom because they think it's dangerous. Why is Ireland and the, the children of Ireland, why are they being subjected to this when there are such massive questions and why are the French, are they that much smarter than the Irish? No, it's just they're, they're being told the truth and they're saying no to protecting their kids, which is what every normal human being should be doing instead of a minister. By the way, whose brother, whose brother is head of CEO of ESB, Lockheed Quinn. <laughs> so, make of that what you will. Cancer, leukemia. This is another one that, that's new. And uh, I, they don't have it any place else in the world that I'm aware of. Now, it, there's a, a creature <coughs> called the drop, dropping dead, is what they're calling it in Scotland. Sudden adult death syndrome. Okay. Now, give you a small idea of how this affects us. My wife and I were driving up along the uh, back road up near Clondalkin in a place called Ronanstown. I don't go up there much. Uh, but simultaneously, we had someone in the back seat. So it, it, was, uh, it was, we had a witness in other words. Simultaneously, my wife says, what was that? My head feels like it's going to explode. And for me, the road in front of me became wavy, kind of like you see in a in the film where the, the sun is beating down on a, a desert road. That was the exact effect simultaneously. We were right near, very close in fact, to uh, the Roman Town Guard Station where they know that 36 people have died, guards have been transferred when they've kicked up about it. And what that signifies is that poor neighborhoods, poorer people are uh, not able, they don't recognize it soon enough, they don't recognize what's happening to them, and they can test in those areas where in middle class areas where I live, we kicked up and we got all of the other masks that they were going to put on the Garda masks. Uh, we, we stopped it because um, our Garda station faces three primary schools. So poor people are particularly vulnerable to this, and Ireland as an incubation center is um, no, there's no one checking so they can research in a live environment. Now they did that seven years ago here or in that loan. 
with uh, a technology called broadband over power lines. And that is a particularly dirty form of electromagnetic radiation. But it was done in that long, and no one knew anything about it because you can't see it. So sudden and all death syndrome, my point there is that we have children drop being dead, and we don't know why. And that relates, brings up another issue here. We've got the, um, the health service executive is, has instructed all the hospitals, uh, the medical profession, that there are only two ways to treat people who are concerned about their health and their electromagnetic sensitivity. One is by medication. Doctor, I'm feeling low, or my blood pressure is up. Uh, my child has autism, and the doctor will give a tablet or put you on a particular path. The other way they're dealing with it in Ireland is you are referred to a psychiatrist. So it's either a physical ailment that can be treated pharmaceutically, or it's a psychological problem, and we're going to label you, and then we can ignore you. Now, last week, and actually James was there, he was when the woman rang, uh, Lucan uh, has become the first wide, free Wi-Fi village in the country. They had planned to do it several years ago in Dublin, and uh, Activists in California got a stop in San Francisco, and the day after it was blocked in San Francisco, Dublin dropped the plans. So now they are doing it surreptitiously through the back door, through the county council, and making Wi-Fi free in Luca. I didn't hear one person ask for it. I didn't see a poster up demanding it. I didn't see people gathering, complaining, we want Wi-Fi, we want Wi-Fi. It's being imposed, and there's a, that brings up another set of questions that I'm not going to address here. So, James. Okay. Now, I mentioned Barry Trower, the, the, the physicist lecture, physics, uh, advanced physics lecture. This is his handout, and all I did was type up the, his words. What he is saying for children, a little girl sitting in a classroom with either a laptop or her iPad, her ovaries are being irradiated. 57% of the follicles in her ovaries that are producing eggs are being damaged. The essence of this is that her children, she won't know the effects. She can't feel it. But her, her child is going to be damaged as well. <coughs> And by the third generation, there's complete infertility. Now, Barry Trower says that we don't have the right to do this to other people. Professor Johansson at the Carolinas Institute in Stockholm says five generations. So what we're looking at is one physicist saying three generations and it's infertility for the human race, and another one saying it's five. And it's not just here. Is happening from uh, in Australia. Uh, a woman I'm in contact with, Penny Auckland, in New Zealand. Her workers got sick and her animals died. You go to um, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, uh, 20,000 cattle died in one night. No explanation. I got a, a call this morning or an email this morning from Serbia, Italy, the leukemia in the village of the Vatican, on a Vatican mast, uh, and they won, they won their case to stop the radiating of their children. France, the UK, Ireland, across America, we have dancing cows because they can't stand the radiation. In down in Wexford last summer, Five cows were found dead in the field. And as they said, it was lucky that the farmer who found them uh, was wearing his, his rubber boots or he would have been dead too. Down the road from me, across the road from Intel, farmer, his cattle, uh, he had calves born without hair. Uh, another 
Yeah, and 14 horses in full, and uh, 14 bears in full, and he didn't get one new foal. He went over to his field one morning, just behind himself, and there were four dead foals on the field. Four, all foals. So, and he said that has never happened to him. These farmers, by the way, don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be labeled as bad farmers. There's John Ryan down in Tipperary. Uh, he got a mask removed from his land because he had to sleep in his truck. Excuse me. He was getting those nosebleeds. You may have seen the article about him. Uh, his grandson nosebleeds the whole time. And it took him five years to get the mask off his land. Yep. Desmond Guinness, on the other hand, it took him over a year. But because he recognized the dangers he had the master removed from his land. So this is all the technology, all that's happening in Rath uh, There were, now this is an apocryphal one. This is one that I've yet to, to, to nail down completely. So bear with me on this one, give me a bit of scope. But the word on the ground with this one is that in Rath near Kara, <coughs> there were um, mass went up and the farmers didn't like the idea of it. So they took it down one night. And the company went and put another one up. And the farmers <coughs> weren't going to be beaten. And so they went and took that one down. <laughs> the company put a third one up. And the farmers pulled that one down as well. And then the company gave up. Supposedly. So that's the, that's the story that I've been told and I'm just relaying it. And when I get verification of it, I'll let, let you know, so watch this space. But the point of this is that in three generations, children will be infertile. And in the meantime, the children of this girl could be autistic. Other ADHD, psychological disorders, and on and on until the human race is nearly extinct and is around. Okay, and it's not as if they didn't know it, by the way. <coughs> this goes back, this is uh, from 1973 in Warsaw. Now there's a whole history attached to the suppression of this, and, it, and I don't want to go into and bore you with it, but it, it is fascinating. But the ones who are the most vulnerable to electromagnetic radiation and frequencies are the pregnant, children, the elderly, people who are already ill, and hypersensitive populations. <coughs> The lady from Lucan who rang, and it's tragic, she's lost all her friends, she doesn't know who to talk to, she can't think straight, she's in pain, discomfort, headaches, has to go to bed, and you hear people if you met her, you know, she's a looper. Wrong. There are people around this country at the moment who are suffering outrageous uh, pain and injury as a result of this. There's a couple. Uh, Holly Moore and her husband up in uh, north, of, north of Dublin, they've been knocked to their feet when they walk from their house, their cars, and the mass that's, up, that's on the hill facing their house. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it can't affect you. So, there's no standards for extremely low frequency fields in Ireland, except these ignorant. That's the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Research. Uh, and the paper that I, I wrote this past week referred to the three scientists who say that those standards are absolutely ridiculous. In fact, uh, you, you may have heard last year how the World Health Organization, uh, the uh, IARC, the International Com Cancer Agency, uh, ruled that electromagnetic radiation is a possible class 2B carcinogen, ranking it with asbestos. Now, the, one of the doctors who stood against that, Annie Sasko, she disagreed completely, and for that, she was ostracized from her, her job. Her, her students were taken from her at the University of Bordeaux in France. But there's no structure now for deciding action or discipline in Ireland for exceeding the ICNR standards. It's a free-for-all. You can do what you want, and since nobody can see, and nobody's looking, you can 
experiment away, and there's no one to say anything, and there's no one to give any evidence. It's completely outrageous that I could be standing on a door for you in Dublin, and this, this happened, where they were experimenting in a live environment with sending signals from one van to another, and those signals are going through me. Did I give you give them uh, <coughs> permission to, to do this? No. I wouldn't even know. But six months later, when I got cancer, <coughs> whom I to blame? Well, it's my lifestyle. It's my diet. It's the food, right? This is that. And besides, if you don't believe what we're telling you as doctors, we're going to send you to the psychiatrist. So, so you know, you're wasting your time. So, um, meanwhile. Ireland has among the highest electromagnetic radiation levels in the world because we're an incubation center. We've got Intel, we've got Ericsson in that loan. Ericsson, there's a reason Ericsson is here because they can do things in Ireland because of this laxity of our rules that they couldn't do, couldn't get away with in Sweden. So uh, again, just sad. Don't, don't forget that. The next time, if you hear about it, the next time, you hear about it, think. It's not the victim. That's what happens with this whole technology, is they're blaming the victim. Oh, that, that child, he had a heart problem. That, that child had a brain problem. <coughs> Professor Andrew Goldberg says that uh, the, the spate of young males that are dying, including Fabrice Mwamba, the was a Newcastle football player who had the heart attack on pitch. Um, that there is an interaction between testosterone and microwaves in a body under stress, under physical stress. So just be aware of some of these things and the next time you hear it, if you hear about it, we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. okay. My point here is that people, as we're here, people are dying. Two years ago, or three now, uh, reporter Anya Keneally on RTE, and it's only run once. One in two people are expected to get some form of, in, of cancer in this country by 2025. It's only 10, 12 years from now. Half the population of Ireland is going to have some form of cancer. This, this is from the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland. And she was interviewing them and commenting on the report. Okay, now, in parallel with that, the Daily Mail says, there's a 30% increase in health care costs. So we've got more people getting <coughs> sick, more people having to pay more money, and if they don't have the money, they have to rely on the national health. Okay, so what happens there? The government's got to cut the top budget because of austerity. It's a, a common sense conclusion that people in large numbers, particularly children, why? Because companies want money from their microwave-based technology. This couldn't be more profound. The, the Romans, everybody used to be afraid of the Romans <coughs> because the Romans practiced decimation. They stand everybody up in a row and they kill every tenth person. Decimation. What we're talking about is a plague unlike anything that we've seen before. And that's why I'm calling this this is the biggest lie, because it is a lie, and what's coming down the road, and they know it's coming, and they're not telling anybody. Half the population of Ireland is going to have cancer. Okay, so why don't we know about this? Okay, well obviously, J.P. Morgan kept it under wraps. Scientists, any scientist who open, opens his mouth about this is being persecuted. They tried to get Ali Johansson um, out of the Carolin in Karolinska Institute because of course Ericsson sponsored all the Nobel Prizes and of course uh, Ericsson would support Al Gore and his global warming or Barack Obama for all of his peace efforts. Uh, in Ireland, the government has earned 450 million euro through its test and trial program. It's testing in a live environment in violation of the Nuremberg Code. This is the code that was established after World War II to make sure that people like Mengele 
didn't experiment on live children. And yet, we're doing it now, we're doing it here. Now, this is, this is one that is relevant. Dennis O'Brien, Dennis O'Brien as well, now he, he magically became a billionaire through all of this microwave technology. Uh, he owned most of the news outlets uh, in Ireland, either by proxy or outright ownership. He had the Irish Independent. And if you want to submit news to any of the provincial papers, most of them you have to go to <coughs> the uh, Independent because they're, well, they're interconnected now. Dennis O'Brien also backed four of the seven candidates for the presidency of Ireland, including Michael B. So he owns the Independent. He has members on the board of the Irish Times. He is a supporter of, a major supporter of the Irish Cancer Society, an NGO. And he also is a supporter of uh, Amnesty International. You have no place to place a complaint, and you have no one to support you if you have questions. So, and then we have this circumstance around the area up in Rowanstown. Mary, Her Mary Herney was the, uh, the Minister for Enterprise and then held, and she actually blocked investigations, uh, medical studies of the events around Rona's Tonga Station. Pat Rabbit, <coughs> Rabbit by name and nature, has <laughs> continued in her footsteps. He's, a, he's the TD for the area, and he will not investigate this. In fact, he's the one that's promoting the test and travel program, which is in violation of absolutely everything. <laughs> It's circular and it's a closed shop. So now we get with the farming community. <coughs> this is an ad that's appearing in a, a, a farmer journal. A substantial cash investment in your pocket to the farmers. What they want to do is the farmers who have mass on their land, they're offering them a substantial sum to buy out the rental income that they're getting from their mass. So what they're doing is they're establishing a privately owned uh, network of their own mass for a one-time payment. Now, in this time of austerity, everybody needs money. Prices are going through the roof. Uh, so this is a, a very attractive investment for a farmer, what the, what the guy is. 10 feet by 10 feet, had to patch a lance to put the mask on, and he, he can get 50, 75 grand. Not, not a bad idea, because the farmer doesn't know that he is irradiating himself and his family and his animals. So it, this raises all kinds of questions about the interests of the IFA and how they uh, represent their members. Okay, so that's shared access. Shared access was started with seed money from J.P. Morgan and those But their original purpose was to lease the mass from the government on government buildings and garden stations and the like, and then sublet that space to other operators. Now we have a new player has come on board the last couple of years, called Black Dot, Black Dot Property Consultants. What they're doing is they've got a, a fund of 20 million euro, and they are paying more per farm than shared access. So why are these companies, one overstepping the other one in little old Ireland, to invest all of this money if there wasn't some payoff? So we have the Farmers Association is not protecting the farmers, and we have corporate enterprise rolling the whole country over without <coughs> anybody questioning the change. Okay, this is this is Professor Holly Johansson. Um, we became friends when 
I was doing my original investigation about my master in Lisa, and I brought him over for a community meeting, much, much like this, where he told us uh, the dangers of all of this. But this is what he said just this week. The industry already knows that this is dangerous. They do read the scientific papers, too, and they know about the risks. I have the feeling that the industry has realized this for quite some time already, and that they have scientific evidence themselves that they hide. In 1990, a couple of American scientists proved that mobile phone signals damage DNA, and that was repeated again just a couple of weeks ago by Dr. Panagopoulos. Uh, the industry wants to shed off this evidence by replicating the study. They spent a huge amount of money on hiring European scientists to do the experiment again. However, the European research proved that the Americans were right. Then the industry tried to stop the study from being published, but it was unsuccessful in its attempt. What, that, what Professor Hampton is saying is that they tried to hide it, they tried to lie, because a lot of these studies, the scientists tend to uh, report what whoever is paying for the study wants them to report. Oh, so now we have this book. This is a, a book by Deborah Davis. Excuse me, this, this is translate, translated from uh, PC to Mac and back and forth. So sorry about the, uh, the mix up here. But we know now that microwaves are a primary force of nature, the whole spectrum. And we can't see atoms, but we know that they exist. <coughs> and this invisibility allows tremendous scope for activity, leading to what Dr. Davis called a disconnect. What she says in her book, now you can't get this book here, I had to get mine in New York. She says, I feel like I'm watching an epidemic in slow motion. <coughs> and her book isn't available here. So, why are smart meters so harmless? Okay, the question, first of all, has to be, why do we need them at all? Anybody here ask for one? No. So, this is being industry driven. You don't fix something if it's not broken. Why is industry driving this? So that has to be looked at seriously. Smart meters measure, monitor, and communicate private electricity, water, and gas usage to utility providers. And they must be replaced every 20 years. An important aspect of this, and you'll see, was it Sean Gallagher, candidate for the presidency? He was developing smart homes in Kilkenny, smart home technology. What that means, it sounds real nice and clever and really trendy and modern and, and all of that, but what that means is that they can keep track of every piece of electrical equipment in your house from your electric blanket to your television to your microwave. Uh, what, com what kind of computer you have, what kind of television you've got, what kind of uh, washing machine dishwasher, and when you use it, these things can all be turned off by remote control, if necessary, wireless. What they get from that is a profile of how you live your life, and if someone, if private enterprise, now not government, if private enterprise decides that all, everyone's using their, their dishwashers too often, we're only going to allow you, because we don't have the power, we're only going to allow you to use your dishwasher on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. <coughs> this is a kind of micro-control over our lives that these smart meters can engender. Okay? So, uh, then if I, okay, can we go back in a minute? Um, so, they're measuring everything, and not only that, regular meters have last 100 years. They emit the equivalent of thousands of cell phone calls every day from and into your home. <coughs> and they operate on this mesh, mesh grid system that creates electromagnetic pollution. So it'll be everywhere. And the bigger the, the, the conurbation, the larger, like Dublin, for instance, it will be very difficult to get around during peak times of the day. Now, I have, I, I'm on the way towards becoming electromagnetically sensitive. So I can testify that there are times when I don't go into Dublin. If I have to go into Dublin during the day, during the week, I 